Howdy folks, back at it. My focus, yeah, I think so. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, this is what you get to deal with in the wintertime if you're trying to stay in an RV. Um, or a trailer. Travel trailer. I'll show you what I'm dealing with here. The reason I got this uh, hair dryer going in the underbelly of my travel trailer because the water has frozen and uh, yeah not a good thing the black water tank is uh, pretty much filled up <clears throat> this is the tried and trusted method of uh, you find things in the winter The humble hair guy. So this is the gray water tank. Install your dish water. And uh and faucet water. And that's frozen shut. And I spent all day on this side, the black water tank. As you can see right there. That thing is probably solid as a rock. Yep. <laughs> I don't think that thing's gonna dethaw anytime soon. <sighs> so that's the pain. That's the hassle. And if I thought you'd be interested, I'd show you what it looks like in the toilet. But it's uh <clears throat> So these RV toilets are designed to be hollow so they um, fill up with water. I guess it's maybe, I don't know if it's part of the design feature, it's like a safety thing where instead of overflowing, you know, poo and pee water all over your floor, kind of um, the toilet kind of serves like a backup tank, I guess, for a Fluids, storage, storage of fluids. So uh, yeah, look at, I'll show you what we've done to the floor here, it's great. Um, it's kinda hard to see right now because of the lighting, but uh, towels, um, rugs, blankets. That actually really helped. And as you can see, uh, Toilet, the wonderful toilet. We've been keeping this heater going. It's like a sauna in here right now. It's pretty nice actually. But uh, yeah, so this thing here, plastic toilet has a little uh, trap right there at the base of the bowl. Base of the bowl and uh, so what it does is, uh, you know, slides open, lets the excrement is that the polite way to say it <laughs> allows that to plunge down plunger plunge down and uh <clears throat> so right now the water is so backed up because that black tank i just showed you black water tank heater just went on um it's a solid block of ice pusicle they're called something you want to try to avoid and i thought i did because I dumped the tank like just a week before this latest Arctic. I love the way they talk about it on the news. It's like down in Texas. It's like every day is the apocalypse. If you listen to the news, it's like um, record breaking cold temperatures. What was it three inches of snow or something? And people don't know how to cope. And for some reason, the electric power plants can't handle the overload. In Texas, I'm pretty sure like all summer long, everybody just sits in their homes with air conditioning going, but they can't handle some people heating their houses. I don't, I don't get it. I don't really get the logic. 
I think it's just all part of the just plot, the script to uh, sell us on the uh, you know this global reset, climate change nonsense. And um, yeah, so every time there's a what do they call it a uh, oh, listening to the NPR on the way home, national propaganda radio. Ah, I forgot the word they used. It was classic though. I love they just come up with these words that make things sound overly dramatic. Freak, you know, freakish spell. I don't know what they used. Anyway, cold spell. Anyway, just got back from town. Um, it's actually warmer up here. Yeah, it's about how many thousand, a couple thousand feet higher elevation than it was down there in town. I was surprised. It was like four, four to six degrees. Get up here, it's like 10 to 15. So tonight's warmer. That's a good thing. That's a plus. Um, as I was saying, this lighting's pretty cool. Not too bad. So yeah, the uh, <laughs> what the toilet situation so it, the black water tank if you don't drain it before it freezes like I say usually we have the underside skirted properly and um, I even have a um, past two winters I've had um, this big old giant you know like a 40 by 30 or something like that um, heating pad for like sprouting seeds Gets pretty warm though, and I used to prop that up underneath the tank just for these occasions. And of course, this time around, I forgot to put it back under because we were actually using it for germinating our seeds last spring. And it's like every winter, I swear, it's a, it's the same thing. It's like, oh my god, it's Groundhog's Day. Is that the way to put it? It's a uh, Twilight Zone. It's. Uh, Pretty much just doing the same things. Yeah, the definition of insanity. Just doing the same things you did the year before, running into the same mistakes. And it gets old. Wonder why I'm starting to look so old. Look at all these gray hairs. But it's just a hassle. And it's like you're out there battling the, I don't know how many times, previous winners I've been out there with that. That same hair dryer, like methodically, I got I got about 50 feet of line um, from the ha the house, the main house, to the camper. That's got three different strips of heat tape on it, and it's got that hose um, foam, and it's got another layer of foam around that foam. Okay. <laughs> And it's, and it's even wrapped in some places with the uh, reflective metal um, insulation, like we got on the windows here. And I guess you can kind of see that. Um, so yeah, I'm like, it's not that I'm not prepared, but previous winters, you'd, you'd run into, oh, there's a cold spot. There's like, you know, six inches of hose that didn't have the heat tape wrapped around it. And so there'd be about, you know, three or four places you'd have to check. Peel away all the old insulation, all the old uh, foam. And sit there with a hairdryer for, literally with your fingers freezing off for hours. Some days you'd have to get it done when the sun was out. Nicest time of the day. And I remember a few times it, it went like two or three days until I finally dethawed. And sometimes... <laughs> Like this time, we're probably just gonna have to wait until Mother Nature decides that the lines can um, thaw again because it's so cold right now, and it's and it's um, yeah, we're all just locked in winter. So so with without water, hey, check this out. We got a uh, ever seen one of these backup plan? Just, you gotta have backups. <clears throat> so, let me turn on the light. Okay, check that out. So we got Tino's litter box. And we got the portable loo now. So this is, I guess, the 
<laughs> Makeshift. Oh, it's the luggable loo. It's a little plug for a luggable loo. Yeah, you've probably seen them before camp camping. We usually put a bag in it, but we might just use it for urine. You know, try to hold the rest. That's usually what you use for the uh, truck camping though. That thing's pretty slick. It's not so bad when you just use it for like a couple days and then dump it out in a place where you can just dig a hole and dump stuff, but I don't know, that's, cause you gotta do what you gotta do when you're living out here. Like a nomad. It's a hard life. <laughs> now it's fun times. Um, so yeah, right now I'm trying to vein hopelessly dethaw the poo tank, and, but from the feel of it, it's pretty much solid rock. So, giant poo sickle. So, what happens with that is it expanded in that toilet back there. I can show you again. I don't know if you're really that excited, but show you what I'm dealing with here, you know? It's just fun. So, you know, I don't I do stuff other than videos. Although, I'm doing a video right now, so I don't know if that counts, but. So this guy, you know, it's got a little trap in there. And that opens up right under that trap. I'll spare you the uh, gruesome details. It's, it's about three inches from the top of the trap. So that means the whole bottom section of this toilet is filled right now with liquids. That's really gross because in the past, when it starts getting warm out, that, that toilet is literally just caked with like <laughs> sewage and uh, it stinks so last summer we actually pulled that thing off and cleaned it out really good like I was in there scrubbing you know it's like uh, kind of like a dish scrubber bleach lots of bleach and so I was like yay it's finally not gonna stink we just got to avoid letting it back up again and fill up the toilet and sure enough that's what we've already done so yeah that didn't last too long might disassemble it again the main thing the the only thing holding that liquid in right now from escaping all of the floor is a a little uh, rubber um, foam gasket seal so yeah it's brand new though, so I just replaced it. So that's a good thing. Because I think part of the reason it was stinking before was that the old one, they get kind of a dry rot and they don't hold at least air. I think it was still holding the liquids, which is good. But uh, this is the fun, this is, these are the little nitty gritty, um, gruesome details you get to live with if you want to live like full time in a travel trailer yeah it's like I've heard it described you have to be a you don't know you don't have to be like an expert in all things but you have to be a little bit of a, a plumber which is the funnest part I mean the first few times that I dealt with that like we had the uh, <laughs> we, it took us a little while to realize that the uh, black tank which is where all the toilet water goes you have to keep a pretty good um, portion of liquids in there. Otherwise, you just get a solid mountain of dung and toilet paper and other solids. And uh, they just sit in there and, and they'll block, they'll restrict the uh, release valve. So it took a few, I remember it took a few summers till we finally got that down to where, you know, you want to have a nice full toilet of liquid every time you drop anything down there besides liquid. So a few times I had to go in there like rotor rooter style <laughs> and just, that was not fun. I had to pull the, uh, I had to pull the uh, hose in here with like a little jet sprayer and uh, loosen things up. They actually make a tool that I had to buy. That's like, it's like a, a snake or a rotor rooter. I think that's what it's called, right? You shove down the uh, 
toilet or a sink when it gets clogged. Same concept with the uh, black water tank. Anyway, that was not fun. And uh, you get used to it though. It's like, okay. I mean, I try to like, hold my breath or this does not work. Something like this would not work. Just like it doesn't for COVID, but um, yeah, I was in the grocery store today. I was like doing my thing, I gotta do my thing, whatever. Kind of. Every time you pass, you know, a woman with perfume on or something like that, it's pretty obvious. You can, it's pretty strong. So, virus particles, pretty small. They can go right through this fabric. Um. So then you got that routine down, and uh, yeah, was I saying you have to be a plumber? You have to be a a little bit of an electrician um, and kind of a handyman because things break, got to be repaired. I mean, these things are made like, they're just slapped together like cheap toys, basically. They're not even made for full-time living. And, uh, you know, they're, they're made to last just beyond that warranty period. And most people, you know, they go camping a couple times a year. That's about it. That's how these things are constructed, just to get, you know, just to, just to f slide past that little window of, of uh, eligibility for uh, any kind of manufacturer warranty. I know they literally just start falling apart, so they're like cardboard boxes, basically. And uh, some of the construction I've seen in these things is just pathetic, like, you know, like, like uh, drawers just held up by like a little chunk of spare wood that they, you know, found off the end of the hacksaw, table saw, <clears throat> stuck in there with a couple screws in it. And that's what's holding up the whole drawer. That's what reinforces the whole drawer. And then it's like, you wonder why the drawer's a little offset, you know, it's like, it doesn't close anymore. So you have to dealt with a lot of these things. Um, handyman, okay, RV repair dude part-time still I guess I don't know we'll see this coming summer um, if we can make it through the winter it's the question like survival on storm mountain right now it's getting warmer though that's the that's the that's the uh, that's the uh, light at the end of the tunnel and that's like a I thought that was the vaccines yeah, we're all supposed to hold out for the vaccines, right? Because, like the Pope says, that's the uh, light of Christmas. <laughs> like, I think they threw the baby Jesus out with the bathwater and they just made big farm of the new savior of the planet. <laughs> Even the Pope, I mean, that's, that's pretty bad when you got the Pope on board with the uh, mass injectionation. Inject, that's not a word, is it? As vaccination the population it took some practice anyway I'm gonna get back at it I'm um, just got home I like I said I, I think I'm pretty vainly attempting to dethaw the poo tank I think we're just gonna have to let it sit until things warm up and I'm sure it's gonna smell great it gets to a point where when it's so full and then it really starts stinking. It's basically like you're sleeping in an outhouse. You're living in an outhouse. Eating and sleeping in an outhouse. And so that's one of the fun perks of a camper life. Being a bunker, bug out Bob. I guess we don't have a bunker, but gypsy life. I think it's nomadic, right? That's the latest thing. It's like camper van for a while, and now it's like nomad life or whatever. It's like FU society. I bet you there's a lot of people right now doing that, actually, because everybody's just trying to escape the madness. <clears throat> and it's all right up in our face, right? All this insanity. Like, they, that's how they want it. They want to get right up in our face. To where we can't, we're up against a wall. And what do we do? And a few of us are probably going to overreact. Well, is it an overreaction? I don't know, that's debatable, but a few of us are going to react with 
violence and that's I don't know I don't recommend it but whatever it's because I try to follow the Bible and uh, Ten Commandments and all that stuff so it's gonna get harder and harder to do that too it's gonna be that's why there's that uh, that little remnant little tiny little fabric piece of fabric left over because things are going to get so insane i mean i just recently i got like honked at and this was like a long honk you know it's not it's like a beep beep it's like Rah! because i was like just kind of easing my way into a passing lane at a slow pace and i guess that wasn't fast enough for the guy but you know i'm just a little mountain guy up here and i'm not used to all you big f city fancy pants freaking psychotic breakdown every day of your lives <sighs> high pressure freaking blazing your way to uh, eternity is that the right word <sighs> burning the candles at both ends um Better to burn out than to fade away. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. It's been a long day. I'm I'm tired. This this uh this the other thing. This cold just drags you down. I've actually felt like I was coming down something for the last week. You know what though? I'm not scared. Cause whatever I get, so be it. And uh, try to fight it. Fight it off with your own God-given immune system. That radical conspiratorial concept in this day and age of uh, science and big pharma and government worship. You know, like, there are things you can do to be healthy. And the biggest thing is, one thing I don't do, get sleep, water, exercise, good food, some vitamins, you know, zinc I've been taking. I got a whole slew of vitamins D, E. Look at this, I'll show you real quick. I don't know why I'm blabbering on so much, but got like this little. This is where you know it's getting cold, too, is we had like this vitamin D back here. It's still probably frozen. Oops, that's B. Yeah, D. It's still frozen. Yes, we're still frozen. Check this out. Good. That's when you know it's cold is when your vitamin D capsules are frozen. It's all hazy looking. Yeah. <laughs> because, uh, sorry, my sink's all messy, or my countertops. It's, uh, when you know it's pretty cold is when the oils start getting solidified. Anyway, vitamin D, zinc, lysine, lysine. See, Dr. Nate, I'm on it. I'm on it, everybody. You can rely on me for all sorts of information, trust me. May or may not be clinically backed. They have no clinical trials attached, but either according to Fauci does the uh, mRNA modifications for all these seven different strains, they say now, in this state alone, Colorado. I don't know, I'm starting to doubt, like, my first theory was that all the strains, it's going to start mutating. And that's what I, I blurped out there. I said, as soon as they start pushing these vaccines, they're all going to start, all these mutations are going to start popping up everywhere. And it's like literally within a week of the UK, they had new strains. And it's like, it went all summer long. And why are all these new strains popping up all of a sudden? So that's still, I'm a little suspicious about all these and I'm, I'm not sure how contagious some of these people are that get vaccines, but, you know, I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to be ruled by fear. You know, I still walk into a grocery store like I did today, <clears throat> and I'm not even thinking about it really, but I'm looking around, uh, went to Sprouts, and a big sign says something like healthy something, eating or something like that. And I'm looking around, I'm like, this, this doesn't look healthy to me, all these people with this mental illness right like it used to be uh 
fear of germs, germophobia. Um, used to be kind of a mental illness, and now it's a pop culture, I guess, is the thing to do. Everybody's doing it. We all got mental conditions on multiple levels, not just the uh, germaphobe thing. I mean, look at what passes for normal right now. <sighs> the new health guy, girl. By the way, I guess it was Dobson, was it? James Dobson got kicked off Twitter just for mentioning his true history. That he was born a man and decided to change into a woman. You can't, you can't just state obvious facts anymore like that. In this super hypersensitive, completely intolerant society in the name of tolerance. It's all about tolerance, but unless it comes to stating the obvious facts... No, I can't do that anymore. Get banned. Deplatformed. Just like white is white, black is black. Male is male, female is female. Anyway, uh, here's a little handy thing to do if you're in the uh, camper situation. Look at those. Eh? Magnets. Yeah. It's all about like space saving in here. And yeah, I've actually learned a lot about like how to reduce the clutter. Even though right now it's a bit cluttered. Um, compares to how much clutter we did accumulate before we moved in here. In fact, I still got like a cargo trailer full of all of our antique uh, furniture, everything. I don't even think about it anymore. It's out of sight, out of mind. And I think that's a healthy thing, um, mentally, spiritually, whatever, to, I have so many possessions because the more possessions we have, the more those possessions begin to possess us. We're always worried about, you know, dusting off everything we own, all of our little knickknacks, uh, protecting things, insuring things. If something breaks, you know, it's the you, and your rest of your rest of your day, the rest of your week is just ruined because poured so much of your uh, affections on this little materialistic object. It's not that I don't have my, you know, I got my few little preciouses still. As you can sh see, I haven't showered for like a couple days. <clears throat> so I'm not, you know, an angel. I'm just getting on my little soapbox like I do when I'm in front of a camera. It comes natural. <laughs> anyway, I gotta go. I've talked too much. It's probably been half an hour. 28 minutes. <sighs> Hopefully at least like two of you might listen to this video. I don't know. Otherwise I'm just like standing in front of a mirror talking to myself. What's up, man? So how you doing today? Good? Good. How things been? Decent? Decent. Anything new? No. That's what I was saying. Cold? Freezing your ass off? Yeah. Poo tank frozen? Solid? Po poopsicle? Yeah, it's still poopsicle. All right. <laughs> I'm done. Thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, God bless. I'll try to keep you updated with my progress, if I ever do make progress. I'm still in the process of making progress. Uh, you can't do a whole lot up here in the wintertime. That's that's one thing. So, yeah, I'll be making more videos. And uh, thanks for uh, subscribing or liking, sharing, getting the word out. If you could, that'd be helpful because uh, just one man out here. I am identifying as a man. I'm proud of it. All right, see you later. I kind of doubt it, but let's see what happens. Shall we? Okay. Ooh. Okay. 
here's some liquids. Oh. I think I'm imagining things. Yeah, still frozen. <coughs> oh yeah, it's a block. One solid block. That's gonna be fun. See so yeah, plan B, I'm gonna have to find that uh, Be. I'm gonna have to find that. What's it called? Heating pad. This looks a little spooky, doesn't it? Let's get, I'm gonna get the cops called on me walking around like this. In this day and age, I think I'm a vampire. I'm pretty sure vampires and werewolves are a thing again. Good night.